Then I went around a little bit, digging through. I had to go through the roof, man. And, and get all that, because we had our wires going up and over, and I had to go open all the roof. And this one right here was the worst. I opened it up. I, had, I don't know what it was. I'll just say it was lint fall on me. And, uh, and, I, and thank God for Alex. She showed up here at like 4.45 or something like that. And I'm like, Alex, I had everything a mess. There, there was white stuff everywhere. I mean, it was bad. I mean, the white glass, there was a, a, what do you call it? The insulation and all this, this stuff nasty up in there, man. Yeah. It was all over the place. I tried to vacuum, I had speakers everywhere, drums thrown over all the mess. And, and I'm like, yeah, I put everything, but you got a vacuum for me. And her and Nico, Nico, uh, thank God for Nico, he got the backpack on. And, <laughs> and so, uh, but we got it done, amen, and, and uh, we got our, our sound working halfway decent. We're believing God for a new one, amen, a new sound system, so that we can put that one aside or, or something. So when we do outreaches, this will be our outreach sound system, amen, but uh, we want a new one. And uh, so that when we do stuff like we did the other day with these rappers and stuff, it's going, be, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Not ha haphazard. Yeah. <laughs> Things going out and, and crackling. And, yeah, you know. <laughs> 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 so, you don't know how much that drives me nuts, yeah. but I like everything to go good, man, to go smooth and stuff. When things like that happen, I, I, I'm sitting there just like, I'm thinking, oh, God, man, Jesus, have mercy, man. Somebody get the switch. People run here and there, and everybody else died of there eating hot dogs. I'm hot like, dogs. oh, Lord Jesus. But it turned out all right. We, we made it. They didn't get mad. Usually rappers will get upset and mad and everything if things don't go right because it makes them look bad. Yeah. But thank God for people that we choose to come and rap yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah. They don't have these kind of attitudes yeah. of pride and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And uh, we had a sweet daddy with us. He got messed up. We had Eternal Soldier who was awesome. He got messed up. Then we had uh, Mi Gente crew and they and they did all. They, they even kept rapping when the sound went off. They didn't even stop them. They didn't even get mad. They didn't even trip. Yeah. And a lot of and there were some people that said, man, that's. That's good because most rappers, you know what I mean, they'll get all offended, upset, and, and mad because things like that happen. But uh, that's why I choose carefully who I bring to our church. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. I mean, there's rappers I can get just right here from Springs and this and that, big name rappers. You can keep them because I don't need a, 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 a pride. I don't need, you know, Satan, he was powerful. You know why? Because he, he was a praise and worship leader. He, 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 he had talent on the mic. Yeah. You with me? And see, the thing about that is, 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 is when you use your gifts and you're doing stuff and you're good, see, the devil will come to you and give you a big old head about you're something. Yeah. You with me? Right. And what happened to Satan is that that's why there's so much power in the music industry is because Satan was the praise and worship leader. I mean, heaven. He was, he was made with instruments in his body to worship so perfectly, he started thinking, Shh, God needs me. I can be better than God. You know, it didn't start at New Hope. Right. Take your while, man. It started in heaven when the devil thought to himself, I'm better than God. You with me? Oh, I, I could be better. I'll, I'll, I'll do things different. God, like I said, you know, God kicked him out of heaven, threw him to the earth, yeah. where he roams around, wandering around, what he's going to do next. You with me? Yeah. But why there's so much power in the music industry is because Satan gives him that power. You yeah. ever heard of people selling their soul to the devil? Yeah. You ever heard of people getting these alter, alter, alter egos inside of them? Yeah. Uh, Beyonce is, is Sasha Pierce. Eminem is, uh, uh, what, what's his alter ego? Slim Shady, um, who was telling me, other, other people, they have these alter egos, and what it is is a demon. Demon fills them, and they, they uh, Beyonce will tell you herself, watch her on YouTube, she'll tell you. She says, you know, I'm not like Sasha. 
I'm sorry, I don't, I don't do that. I don't do the move she does. She's pretty radical. She does these naughty moves and all this stuff. And I mean, it gets attention from the nation. But she says, oh, I'm not like that. She does that. Who's she? That demon that takes control of her? You with me? Or, or whoever it is. A lot of these rappers sold their soul to the devil. You with me? And so what, what happens is when they come into the church, they get saved and they have talents. See, God has to tame that talent. You with me? Yeah. God has to challenge you. God has to humble you to realize that, that the talent you have comes from Him, not from you. Right. You with me? And so when you surrender it to God, He'll exalt you. He said, humble yourself, and in due time, I'll lift you up. Yeah. But if you lift yourself up, He said, I will humble you. You with me? And so, you know, I mean, a lot of these guys, you know, I choose real carefully who I bring in because I've done it before. Just choose any rapper to come and make our church look good. I don't do that no more. You with me? I don't need talent. I don't need that. What I need is a man or a woman of God who loves God more than they love a sound system. You with me? And, and so, you know what I mean? It, it, you know what I mean? So, you know, God, that any talent that you have, anything that you have from the Lord, you always got to submit it to the Lord. Even in ministry. That's why you see so many pastors that go astray, that go wrong. is because you get there and God gives you the power and you start thinking, it's me that's doing this. Yeah. I'll lay hands on them. Yeah. I'll pray for them. I'll change this city. And that's what God has to start changing our hearts. Yeah, you with me? doesn't matter what it is. No matter what you do. You know what I mean? You always got to be humble before God and let Him change you. And if not, He'll change you. He'll humble you. Right. Either way, God will humble you. He'll get the glory for it. Yeah. Amen. Man, we lost a lot of adults in here tonight. I don't know where they went, walking around or teaching a class. I don't know how to teach a class. We don't have no classes. I don't know where they went. But anyway, the just shall live by faith. Alex, you entiendes? this. The just shall live by faith. <laughs> Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6. I want to go there real quick. I read this, but I, I read it. But it's in Mommy on the New Living Translation. Okay, I need uh, I need that translation. So Genesis 16. I guess I should have kept my wife's. I, uh, 15. Well, yeah, but I can't, I can't read it. It's too small. Genesis 16, I mean, I'm sorry, 15, verse 6, mine says this, Abraham believed the Lord, uh, and he credited it to him as righteousness, but the Living Translation reads a little bit different, read that, Did, wait, hold on one sec, where's mine, somebody want to grab this and Take it to her. Check. That's why I like that cordless. And Abram believed God, then God considered him righteous on account of his faith. Abraham believed God, and God considered him righteous? Yes, righteous on account, on account of his, his faith. faith. Amen? Amen. Um, let me see. Just start. Let's just stop there. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the Word of God. We thank you, Father, that your Word is true and it works in our lives. And Father, we ask your blessing upon this time. Father, we ask you to come. You said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So God, we're going to open your Word tonight. And we pray, Father, Lord, fill us with faith tonight. Father, we don't want to be those who are constantly scolded for the lack of faith. We want to be those, Lord God, who are praised by God for great faith. Teach us tonight, Lord God, how to walk in it tonight. How to walk in faith, how to be led by our own faith, Lord. How to live by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Genesis 15, 6, this is what she just read. Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord uh, con considered him, or considered... I don't know if I have the right one because it mine's 
had read, the Lord considered his response of faith as proof of genuine loyalty. So I must have had a different translation there. Let me read it again. Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord considered his response of faith as proof of genuine loyalty. I like that. The Lord considered his response of faith, amen, as proof of genuine loyalty. Because there's many people out there that can tell you, but they're a Christian. You with me? They can tell you all day long they believe God. You with me? They can tell you all kinds of stuff, but see the proof's in the pudding. You with me? There, and, you know, and, and Abraham was a man who believed God. He was a man who God spoke to him. God said, I'm going to give you children. I'm going to do this. He was already an old man. He was 80. I think he was 80 when God called him. Yeah. 90 when he, you know what I mean, when he started believing for, his, for, for a baby. 100 when he actually got one. Yeah. You're talking 20 years right there. Yeah. You with me? I'm not, I'm not saying he was 20 and 40. He had a son. I said 80 and 100, he had a kid. Yeah. I don't know if the times were different then or what, you know what I mean? Maybe somebody like me back then was considered 100 years old. I don't know. You with me? Because even at that, you think, well, psh, I still yeah. got it. But 100? That's old. God told him, I'm going to give you a son. And he believed God. You with me? His response of faith proved his genuine loyalty. I like that. I like the way that read. You with me? Because there's got to be a response of faith in your part. Because you can hear what I'm preaching tonight and walk away as I think, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I, I'm glad Abraham, see, because he, in the New Testament, was called the father of faith. And we're his descendants. We're the seed of Abraham. And so his promises are our promises yeah. now. Yeah. You with me? But I'm glad Abraham way back when didn't start questioning the Lord. And you know, Abraham didn't really have all these preachers to go off of. I think that's probably a good thing. I thank God it wasn't some preacher who walked into my room and began telling me about Jesus and sat there trying to convince me for two hours that I need to be saved. Yeah. I thank God. I was ready when, when that woman walked in and just told me, you, know, you need Jesus. Just like that, I knew I needed Him. Yeah. Just like that, I responded to Christ. I responded to Him. Were you, were you with me? Yeah. My, my response of faith proved that genuine loyalty. You with me? Because yeah. it wasn't a man, and then the man fails, and then we, our eyes are on him, and, and then we backslide because the pastor backslid, and all this stuff, and you know what I mean? It's like, was it ever a genuine? Yeah. I thank God that, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Abraham had nobody else to base his Christianity off of. All he had was a word from God. Yeah. See, that's why it's so important that you hear from God. Are you with me? And, and listen, it's it's fine to, you know, I do it. I fellowship with pastors. I fellowship with the men of God. You know what I mean? I bounce stuff off of them. I listen to what they have to say. You know what I mean? Sometimes I adjust myself to what they're saying. And, you know what I mean? And, and, and what they're doing so that I can, you know what I mean? Do, you know what I mean? Be more effective and stuff. But but I, but I see, when it all comes down to it, they didn't call me. Yeah. God did. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. That's what I believe my pastors seen in us. You with me? Because right. see, there's many, you know how many pastors have come through Pastor Ray? Yeah. You know how many have been there in conferences and stuff, and, and you know what I mean, and, and have been there and, and wanted to be New Hope, and there's a lot of them now wanting to be New Hope Ministries. Yeah. You with me? But, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? The years will prove it. Time will prove it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who God put there by the Spirit. And who's just there for a free ride or a name? Yeah. I ain't there for a name. I don't need a name. Right. You with me? Yeah. I need the fellowship. And I know I want to place myself under a mighty man of God. You with me? Yeah. But even in that, I have to understand, and he understands, my calling does not come from him. My calling is from the Lord. Yeah. I choose to honor my pastor. I choose to listen to him. 
and, 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 and get counsel from him, hear his preachings, you know what I mean? But he, he didn't call me, God did. Yeah. And he knows that. And he told me, he, he was just preaching the other day when I was watching one of his messages in the discipleship, when he was teaching us that went to the day, day over there to the, to the conference. He was teaching us and he was talking about the different anointings. And he was talking about an anointing that comes from a, that, that's on a, on a, a king, right? Yeah. They anointed kings. They anointed, um, um, let's see, they anointed kings, they anointed priests. Because uh, remember Aaron was anointed and it said how they anointed and the, it's like unity is beautiful, like the oil running down the, the face and beard of Aaron that's going upon his robe and all this. So they anointed the priest, they anointed the king. But Pastor Ray was preaching so awesome, he says, but the prophet of God was never anointed by a man. The prophet of God was, was one who anointed the king, who anointed the priest, but was anointed himself by God. You with me? And Pastor Ray was talking about that, and he said, you know, when I was, when one day as I was praying for the Holy Spirit, for God to fill me with the Holy Spirit, he goes, and everybody else was speaking in tongues, and they got it, but I never got it, he said. And I'd be there, you know, he said, but he would always be reading his Bible. He would always be praying this, even at home. And he said, I remember one day I got up to go read my Bible. And I thought, man, that's heavy duty. Because most people, you get up to go watch the NBA. Yeah. You get up to go watch the car. Yeah. Pastor Ray got up to go read his word. And he says, I was reading, I was, I was, uh, as I was going to read, I walked down the stairs. And I felt an oil. And, you know what I mean? And I guess to, you'd only understand it if it happened to you. He said, I felt the, the oil of God come on me. And he said, I know it was God, but I didn't know what it was. And I just felt like hot oil over my body and down me. And he said, and, and I know God had done something, but I didn't know what it was. So he had to go study it out. And he realized, and he came up with that, that he said, because God anointed Pastor Ray. Not, not a man. He was under his pastors, but it wasn't the men who said, uh, Ray, you're going to preach. It was God. You with me? And he said the prophet of God was anointed by not by man, but by God. Amen? And you, that's what I'm telling you today. Many are called if you were chosen. When God called the apostle Paul, God called him in this, in, in this blind state. You with me? God called Paul and said, you know what? Uh, uh, he knocked him off his horse. Apostle Paul's blind. He can't see. He calls another disciple. God speaks to this disciple and says, hey, you need to go anoint Paul. You with me? Amen. I have chosen him. Amen. There's a lot of disciples, but there was one chosen by God. His name was Paul. God said, he's my chosen vessel. He's going to preach the gospel, but tell him of all the things he's about to suffer for me. You with me? Amen. So you got to understand, those he calls, you know I mean? Those who he's chosen, to be as anointed vessels, they go through hell of that, man. Some of you think you go through hard times. You with me? Yeah. And the devil don't hit you as hard as he does the pastor. That's right. You with me? So you That's can't right. put yourself on that level. And if you do, and James and John tried to be like Jesus, well, can we sit on your right and your left? Because we can be like you. Jesus says, can you suffer? Can you drink from the cup I'm about to drink from? And they said, we can. And Jesus said, okay, you will. Paul was boiled in oil. He didn't die. He was boiled in oil. He was beaten to death several times. He was whipped. He said 39 times, or 40 minus 1, he said. 39 lashes, he said, like three times. Could you imagine what Paul looked like? He was whipped like Jesus was whipped three times. He was boiled in oil, beaten with rocks to where he was dead, laying there. And when they turned around to go back to the city, God raised him up and he runs to the city he's preaching when they get there. That's a no-quit spirit right there. I don't care what you do to me, I'm going to preach the gospel. Yep. Yep. You with me? Say, I, I want to be a chosen of God. God chooses them. I didn't choose myself. I was reading them yesterday on, the, on my phone. I get a scripture every morning. And it was that verse. And God spoke to me a few years ago and I preached that message. When God says, son, you didn't choose me. I chose you. You with me? You didn't choose me. I chose you. 
That's what I was going through. A lot of hatred, going through trials in my life, and, and, and I think, oh, I'm so unworthy. God, I, I don't even deserve to be a pastor. I don't even, you messed up when you chose me. And God's like, I, I didn't choose, you didn't choose me. You didn't come after me. Son, I chose you. Right. You with me? Yeah. If you choose something, you know what I mean? You, you take the responsibility of that person or of that puppy, yeah. right? Yeah. Or of whatever it is, you take the responsibility because you chose it, right? right. Yeah. God chose me, amen? I didn't go looking for God. I didn't go in the hospital over there. Oh, I'm going to come and find God here. No, man, I was all jacked up. God walked in and said, give me your life, son, and I'll, never, I'll turn your life around. He chose me. He called me from that very day. I'm going to make you a preacher. That's what he did to Paul. That's what he did to Pastor Ray. Pastor Ray was anointed, and, and he has that prophetic anointing on him today that doesn't come from a king. It doesn't come from a, a, a priest. It comes from uh, the Lord. You with me, and that, and that, but that you gotta understand. Abraham was chosen by God, just like that. You with me? God called Abraham. Abraham was a heathen. You with me? It's like God. Abraham never. He wasn't a Christian going to going to the assembly of God. You with me? He was a flat out heathen like me. I wasn't no Christian. I was far from it, man. Paul was a, was a Christian killer. You yeah, with me? Yeah. Peter was a filthy mouth fisherman. Uh, Pastor Ray was a man on death, on looking for death row for killing a, a judge or some yeah. Yeah, commissioner uh, in a drunk, drunk driving accident, sitting there looking at murder charges. You with me? Yeah. When God called this man, you from Santa Fe, you give me your life, I'll use you. Yeah. You with me? He chose him. He anointed him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And he anointed uh, 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 Abraham. Let me read it one more time. He says, Abraham uh, believed the Lord, and the Lord considered his response of faith as proof of genuine loyalty. I put this word, and I said this earlier. God is not God is not moved by your by your problems or your needs. He's moved by faith. Yeah. Hebrews eleven six says this: Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Amen. Because them that come to Him must believe that He is, and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Yeah. You've got to believe in God, and you've got to believe that His rewards are with Him. Right. I preached one of the services uh, for the discipleship training, uh, which you can purchase, by the way. Yeah. Um, that it's a, it's a, a rewards of rewards of a disciple. Uh, I think I called it mansions, rewards of a disciple, mansions, crowns, and glory. Them things await the disciples of Christ. You with me? Yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you like rewards? Yes. Amen. How many of you ever, ever heard of the rewards card you can get for shopping at Safeway or yeah. or what? What is the system? You get the gas. Yeah, yeah, she gets. She got like two, like two dollars off of gas. Yeah. Uh, we paid like two dollars and something, and she's like, you know, I'm not gonna tell you what we did, but <laughs> we got blessed too. Yeah. Amen. We only paid like two something a gallon. Yeah. When you're paying three fifty a gallon, it makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Rewards. Rewards that even she didn't give some of her mom and brothers and put that number in and got the rewards. Yeah. You with me? I, I don't know about you. I like rewards. Yeah. You with me? I like being rewarded yeah. for things I do. Yeah. You with me? When I preach good, you know, you make that favorite meal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But the rewards are coming. God has his rewards with him yeah. for those who diligently seek him. For anybody? No. For people who just show up on Sundays to church? No. Those who diligently seek Him, yeah. Yeah. His rewards are with Him. And when He comes, He's going to have them in His hand. Yeah. And some of you, and I, and I talked on that thing, and I told you, I told the, the, the people here about, I think, about at least five crowns yeah. that are available to you. You with me? Yeah. There's one, and I know 
I think it's in First Peter five somewhere where, where Paul was Peter was talking to the pastors and the elders and telling them about ruling right, ruling right, to 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 running the church right, not because of money or stuff. But he talked about a, 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 the crown. Uh, I can't remember what kind of crown he called it, but it's for the pastors who rule rightly. I want one of those. I want to have you know, one crown all over, man. Why? So I can put him at his feet. With me? I'd rather, you know, if you have one, it's cool, but if you have ten, then they praise God. Take them all, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know about you. I don't want rewards. Amen? Watch this one. Psalm 78, 22, I think it is. Let's go to that. Psalm 78, I think it's verse 22. says, for they did not believe in God or trust in his uh, deliverance. Let me back up a minute here. He says, when the Lord, when the Lord heard, heard them, it said he was very angry. Oh, I better back up some more. They spake against God saying, can God spread a table, amen, in the desert? Amen. I think we talked about that one once. Yeah. But God, in verse 22, it says that God, uh, that God was angry with them, but for they did not believe in God or trust in His deliverance. Somebody read that for me. Who, uh, I know you have the New Living Translation. Uh, you got the mic, Sister Mary? Read that uh, 20, 19 to 22. They even spoke against God Himself. Why can't He give us the give us decent food as well as water? They grumbled. Jehovah heard them and was very angry. The fire of His wrath burned against Israel because they didn't believe in God or trust in Him to care for them. They didn't believe in God to trust in Him or to care for them. To trust. Him. To, they didn't believe in God to to trust for him to, you know, to uh, the, they didn't trust him to take care of they didn't trust him to, take care, to care for them uh, yeah or even uh, you know, to, or to deliver them right? yes yeah. uh, that's why God was angry because yeah. they didn't trust him to care for them or to deliver them yeah. God he, he wants to do that for us yeah. you with me right. and I'm telling you you know what I mean a lot of times we say you know what I mean? Oh, I believe it. I trust him. I trust him. So Proverbs 3, I, I gave Hito this the other day. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. But in everything you do, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. We trust in God up here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Can God do it? Do you want to make God mad? Keep saying that. Can God do this? You with me? I don't know if He can. I don't know if He if He can help me. I don't know. You know what I mean? And this food He's giving me, man. That's why you gotta thank God, whether it's a bowl of cereal or a T-bone steak. Yeah, amen. You with me? Because hey, you know maybe God gave you the cereal or the ramen to humble you. Yeah. You with me? Maybe He wants to see if you can survive on bologna. Yeah. And before you get the T-bone. Yep. Right. You with me? You know, and, and a lot of times we, we don't realize we're grumbling, complaining against God, and, and, and we don't even realize it. You know? We're just like, man, God, he, you know, said he was, they were like, can't God give us any decent food? Yeah. <laughs> but they, he was angry at them because they did not trust him to, to meet their needs and to deliver them from their problems. Yeah. You with me? Amen. They didn't walk in faith. And I, I wish I would. Maybe I did. Yeah, I did. Psalm 78, 22. And this is the way I wrote it down from this translation. I don't know what it was. It says, because they did not uh, hold fast, or they did not hold, 
or they did not have faith in God, and they did not trust Him or His ability to deliver them. Because they did not have faith in God and did not trust Him, His ability to deliver them. Amen? That's why God was angry with them. That's why God got mad. You know what I mean? A lot of times we just, I am a friend of God, and we, we've been talking smack all day, yeah. and God's angry, man. He's like ready to chop your head off with the sword. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? Because we're walking, and, and what, what gets us in trouble is this thing right here. Yep. Yep. I told you earlier, in our mouth is life and death. Right. You with me? Yeah. In our mouth is life and death. And we speak either life or we speak death over any circumstance we're going through. Yeah. I don't think I, you know, I mean, I don't know. But maybe it's not God's will to, you know, for them, for them to be healthy. God's will is to heal. Yeah. You with me? How can it not be? And I understand there's times, like Job. Job was tried. If it's a trial of their faith, and they're going through a sickness, or they're going through something, but even on the other end of it, God gets the glory because their faith was built up yeah. through this trial. Yeah. You with me? It's never, well, maybe it's the Lord's will that they die. You know what I mean? If they are truly a saint of God, you with me? Yeah. And they're a witness for Jesus, it's costly. Their death is costly to God. So why would it be His will for them to die? Yeah, oh, well, maybe the Lord needed them. <laughs> you, you with me? I don't know. Sometimes I have a hard time with that, man. You know, they write the... I mean, they're cute for poems. Yeah. You with me? Well, the Lord needed them, so He took them. And that. It's like, no, they were a drug addict, man. They were yeah. a junkie, and they wore their kidneys and liver out. Yeah. You know, maybe the Lord had need of them. No, it doesn't work that way. The Lord has need of His saints here on earth being witnesses for Him. That's why He said, costly in the eyes of the Lord the death of His saints, because they were mighty witnesses for God, and they died prematurely. You know when somebody has run. Paul ran his course. He finished his race. He said, I fought the good fight of faith. I finished my course. I'm ready to go home. You with me? And you know when people, you know what I mean, they run their race, they're ready to go home, and it's all good. And when somebody dies like that, boom, they're just dead. Car wreck, boom, you know what I mean? You know, that I wasn't the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. David Wilkerson was a mighty man of God, prophet of the Lord, and he was driving, uh, what, last year uh, to preach. And he got killed in a head-on car accident. I don't know if he got tired and went over or the other car came over, but, you know, it killed him instantly. His wife survived, but he didn't. You know what I mean? I would probably say, chances are, that wasn't the Lord. Yeah. That was the devil who took him out. Mighty man of God. I'm talking a prophet to the nations, man. Yeah. And the devil tries to kill you. <clears throat> I told you, you know what I mean? When you're chosen of God, the devil tries to take you out, man. Yeah. Let's look at some scriptures. You ready? So we're going to pass that mic around. Sister Mary, if you want to get Matthew 6.30. Uh, I think it's 6.30. And then uh, uh, Sister Vicky, Matthew 8.10. Sister Rosalie, Matthew 9.2. Brother, uh, uh, Matthew 9.22. Let's see who else. Alex, Matthew 9, uh, 14, 31. Sister Jen, who's behind you over there? Jen. Jen uh, Matthew 15, 28. Sister Angela, Matthew 17, 20. And Sister Nellie, Matthew 21, 21. Everybody got theirs? Yeah. If you don't, let me know and I'll give it to you, but... Do you have Matthew 6, 30 ready to go? Go ahead and read it. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, won't he more surely care for you, O oh men of little faith? Hmm. Speaking of how God clothes the, the fields of the, of, of the earth with flowers, flowers made it beautiful. And he's saying, if God does that, won't he care for your physical needs? Do you guys know that, I mean, if you have need of clothing? Yeah. I mean, I understand there's, you know, places you can go and people that give away clothes. 
You understand? But do you understand that God is co he's concerned about your clothing? Yeah, amen. And do you know that there's nothing wrong with saying, God, uh, <coughs> I sure could use a new wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's one pair of jeans or a shirt or some new shoes. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. One pair at a time. One shoe at a, you know, one pair of shoes at a time or whatever. Or God, give me a whole new wardrobe. Yeah. Because you know why, God? Because I want to honor you with the way I dress. Yeah. You with me? And, and there's nothing wrong with that because he said it. He said in his word, God cares about what you're wearing. Yeah, you with me? Oh, ye of little faith. In other words, God said, pray to me. Give us today our daily bread. That's what the Lord's Prayer is saying there. Yeah. Give us today not just the bread we eat, but the things we have need of. If you read that whole thing there, you're going to see, why do you worry about what you're going to eat, drink, what you're going to wear? He said, the Lord knows what you have need of even before you ask. Yeah. You know what ask means? Pray. Amen. In other words, we're supposed to be praying for our daily needs. Yeah. What, we, what we're going to eat today. Give us today our daily bread. Today. Amen. You with me? Amen. Give us today what we need. God, we need a, a drink. We need th we're thirsty. We need milk. Yeah. Father, we're praying for milk. Our children need milk. They need cereal. We, God, give it. I mean, we don't even think of that. We're like, well, this, this, can I borrow five bucks? Get some milk. We don't think of praying, do we? Uh -huh. We'll ask somebody, hey, you can still get wick. Yeah, yeah. I need a gallon of milk. Yeah. We're always looking. We're always, but we're never praying. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think sometimes it angers the Lord that we don't even pray to him for, you know what I mean, even for the meals we do get. We're in a hurry. He was like, oh, I forgot to pray. No, well, thank you for every meal you get. Yeah, okay. Pray. God, give us this day. If you, especially if you don't have food. Yeah. Pray. And if you get none, thank him for nothing. Yeah. Thank him. Say, God, well, you must have needed to lose some weight, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Right? Yeah. Amen. Thank him for it. In all things, give thanks. What's the next one say? Matthew 8, 10. Uh, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Okay, what was he talking about? When you go up just a few verses, what, who was he talking to? The centurion who had a um, servant that was paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. And he told him, what did the servant tell him to do? He said, Jesus, you don't have to come with me, right? Is that the one where he said, yeah, just yeah. speak the word? Oh, uh, the centurion said, answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said in 8, at 810? When Je Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such faith, faith not even in Israel. Wow. Yeah. He said, you know what, Jesus... Jesus said, let me go to your house. Your servant's sick. I'm going to come to your house. He said, you don't even have to come, Jesus. You with me? Sometimes we think, you know, wow, I need to drive across the country to go be with them because they're going through surgery and I need to be there. To be. What happened to prayer? Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean yeah. not unto your own understanding. You with me? Yeah, amen. Acknowledge him in everything and, and, and he'll direct your path. You with me? This man just said it. He said, just pray. Just say it, Lord. And my servant from this distance will be healed. It freaked Jesus out. I believe Jesus tripped him out. He's like, whoa! I've never seen this great faith in the church. There you Why don't you want to come to my house? You know? That's right. Or whatever it is. But why? Yeah. You know, and questioning everything that Jesus does. Jesus sees a sinner who comes in and says, Hey, you know, I, I know that you're a mighty man of God. I know that there's healing in your hand. My servant's sick. And, 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 and I need you to pray for him. Jesus said, I want to come with you. Yeah. I believe Jesus knew what was going to happen the whole time. Yeah. But he's like, No, I'm not worthy. Because, see, if Jesus would have come under the roof of this sinner, centurion, he would have been considered by their law unclean. And it would have affected his ministry. Yeah. And so this guy said, no, you don't even have to come because, you know, you can't do that. Lawfully in your beliefs, you can't do that. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. Blew their, blew their minds. Yeah. 
And he said, I haven't seen such great faith in the church. Yes. You with me? Yes. He said, I'm seeing faith out here among sinners. And the church is asking, why? Yeah. Isn't that a trip? Yeah. Matthew 9, 9, 2. Some men were brought to him a paralyzed lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed, take faith, no, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Man, that's heavy duty right there. You know why? Because these four men, they, 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 they went to church, right? They went to church. The church is packed, and it's, revival's happening, and they're thinking to themselves, this is not right, dude. It's not right that we show up to church alone. And they're like, they're all looking at each other. Hey, what about, what's his name, man? What about the homie down the street? Yeah. Dude, man, we ought to go get him, dude. He's sick. He's he's paralyzed. He needs he needs to be healed. And they're sitting there, and their hearts are convicting them because they're at church and revival's happening. And they're like, you, when you got God in your life, it's like you want everybody to be saved. Amen. And they're like, let's go get him. They go pick him up, and they got a corner of the mat. Each one has a corner of the mat. They're walking him in there. They can't go because there's so many people they can't get him in. And they're like, what are we going to do? Uh, you know, I mean, had it been us, we'd have been like, sorry, dude, we'll yeah. take you back home. Yeah. We tried. Yeah. yeah. You know, they know, man, these Mexicans went up on the roof. They tore the roof apart. <laughs> they literally, all that stuff would have fallen all over the place. Yeah. Jesus looks up, and when he's seen their faith, not the paralytic, when he's seen the friend's faith, that they were going out of their way to go get this paralytic, to bring him to Jesus because they know he needed help. He seen their faith and he said, man, your, your, your sins are forgiven. Yeah, you. Amen. you with me? Amen. Do you notice that he didn't tell them, hey, you're healed? First thing he dealt with was their sins. Yeah. When we go pray for people, when we minister to people, you're not there just to tell them that God can heal you. Because what happens if God heals them, they get up and go right back to the bar. I've known people like that. Sister, one of the brothers that we know, I don't know him personally, but I know him, and he had a transplant. He was dying and he had the kidney transplant. And when he was done and he was healed, he's right now an alcoholic, a drug addict again. He went right back with the new kidneys and right back to the world, drunk and drunk, and now he's dying. I think he died or he's dying now again from that same thing. He just was saved from. So what do we do? We preach to them, Jesus. Listen, God will heal you, but before he does, he wants your heart. What good does it do for you to get, to get healed and get out of here and go right back to your miserable life? God wants to save you. First thing he did was he saved his soul. He said, your sins are forgiven you. And then he says, what's easier for me to say that or for him to, um, for him to be healed? He says, all right, you guys want to see it? He says, man, take up your mat, get up from there. And he says, roll it up, go ahead and go home. You got what you came for. You with me? But Jesus seen their faith. That's when your faith goes to a whole new level. Because it ain't no more sitting there praying constantly for our daily bread. It's like, no, dude, I got to do something with my faith. You with me? Yeah. It's heavy. What's the next one? Matthew 9, 22. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. If you go up a little bit, is that the woman with the issue of blood? It says a woman that had an issue of blood and, yeah. and Jesus touched her. Is that what it is? And he said, what to her? Take heart, woman. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. Ain't that heavy? Amen. I, I Amen. preached on that. I talked about it a lot. The woman had an issue for 12 years. She's yeah. glad. You know, if you have an issue like that, you know what I mean? Listen, your whole life is ruined. Yeah. Because in those days, you know, no man would even consider you. Yeah. So you're, you're, any future you had of having children, out the window, yeah. marriage out the window, living a normal life as a woman out the window. How many th think that that would be a pretty desperate situation? Yeah, I mean, you can go to church all you want, but if you have all the and, so, and, and a lot of us have issues. Yeah, that's right. 
You with me? And, and, and you know what I mean? This woman said, I'm, I'm tired of my stuff. And you as a person, you as an individual, our families as, as humans, they need to be sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired before they change. You with me? You can tell them all day long, hey, listen, man, God can save you, God. He thought, listen, don't do the drug, don't do that. And they'll still do them. Yeah. And laugh at you as they do them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but wait, their time is coming. Because yeah. you're praying. Yeah. They're going to hit a wall. They're going to come to a famine. They're going to get, you know, in jail. Something's going to happen to them. And then they're going to be like, oh, what was that you were telling me? Yeah. That's right. You with me? God has a way of getting to people like that. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. This, this woman had this issue, and she was, and it said, it, it said in there, she had spent all her money on doctors. Yeah. Ain't that something? Yeah. Ain't that something that, that, that people, they come to church broke? Yeah. Spent all their money out there in the drug lords? Yeah. These drug guys out there driving 32 inch wheels because of you. Yeah. Right? right. Shani's liquor and all these places over here. You know what I mean? The people are rich because of us. Yeah. You with me? Marlboro's. That company's billions dollars industry. Why? Because people. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably living in mansions driving the best cars. Yeah. You with me? And then when we wasted everything and we're down on the, our back and there's nothing, not even clothes, to, to, you know, and we're like, oh, I'm ready, Jesus. Aren't you glad Jesus doesn't say, I doubt it. Yeah. I gave you time to repent. Yeah, that's right. I asked you, you, when you had the money to come and repent, you didn't do it. So get out of here. Yeah. I thank God. He's a Jesus man. You know, come just the way you are. Yeah, amen. All broke. And I believe God let her get to that place where she had no money left. And Jesus is the last, last person she turns to. And he was the first person that she needed. Yeah. You with me? Man. And you know, even in our personal lives, a lot of times, you know, I mean, we'll run to Tylenol, we'll run to Doctor So and So, we'll run to this person, or we'll run to the counselor, or the psychologist, or we'll run to you know uh, whoever. You know what I mean? And the last place we ever go is to the place of prayer. Yeah. You with me? Man. Because right. we trust in all these different things, and yet. I mean, even, and, and Jesus don't have an attitude when you come. He's yeah. like, it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready to be blessed? Yeah. <laughs> What's the next one, Matthew 14, 31? Because immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Back up a verse or two. It says, then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he but, was... There's that big but. Yep. There's that doubt right there. He walked on water, but when he saw the wind, what happened? He was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Did he doubt? Yeah. And what happened? Did Jesus say, sorry, dude, I told you not to doubt. No. I told you keep your eyes on me. No. Oh, wow, you're bad. No. What did he do? He immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Said, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Heavy. Next, next one, 15, 20, is it 28? Yeah. Says, Jesus gave in. Oh, woman, your faith is something else. What you want is what you get. Right, right then her daughter became well. Back up just a couple verses. You got the message? Yeah. Can you back up just a, a little bit? Um, We're just talking to the woman. She's crying she out. Big, it says, when a Canaanite woman came down from hills and pleaded, Mercy, Master, Son of David, my daughter is cruelly afflicted by an evil spirit. Jesus ignored her, and the disciples came and complained. He what? He, he ignored her. He ignored her? Mm -hmm. How dare him? <laughs> when he ignores you, do you think he's trying to teach you something? Yeah. Watch, go ahead. And the disciples came and complained, now she's bothering us. Would you please? <laughs> <laughs> Would you please take care, take care of her? She's driving us crazy. Jesus refused, telling them, I've got my hands full dealing with the lost sheep of Israel. 
When the woman came back to Jesus, went to her knees and begged, Master, help me, he said. It's not right to take bread out of children's mouths and throw it to dogs. And she was quick, you're right, Master, but bigger dogs do get scraps from the Master's table. And Jesus gave in. Oh, woman, your faith is something else. What you want is what you get. Right then her daughter became well. Wow. Her faith had her begging. Yeah. Her faith had her like a dog on her knees. Yeah. Her faith had her crying out even to the disciples. Yeah. And they were like, dude, she's bothering us. Jesus, do something about it. You know somebody's hungry if they're doing that. Yeah. You know she wanted her daughter set free. Yeah. She's crying out to God. She said, like, man, do something, God. And then the, he didn't listen to her. And she's crying to the disciples. And they, she was such a nuisance to them. They said, Jesus, she's driving us nuts. Yeah. You with me? Because yeah. sometimes the disciples can get an attitude too. Yeah. You know? Man. And Jesus, man, he, he says, woman, I can't get you. You're a dog. Could you imagine that if I had called somebody a dog? Oh. If I said, man, you're nothing but a dog, lady. Get out of here. <laughs> they would have write me up out of the paper. Yeah. Pastor calls woman dog. Yeah. Jesus called this woman a dog. He said, it's not right for me to give the blessings of God to dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs. I pictured Shorty right there. You know my mom's dog, Shorty? Yeah, yeah. He's a chihuahua. He's supposed to be, oh no, a weenie dog. He's supposed to be this big and seven to ten pounds of maximum weight. He's about 40 pounds. He's this wide. He needs a skateboard for his poncho. And he sits straight up. And he looks so cute. You just, you're eating. I, I don't. I'm, Get out of here. Touch my food. But he sits there. Everybody just give him food, right? And, 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 and I think she did that. She got on her hands and knees and she's like, Lord, she, she was desperate for her daughter to be saved. She said, my daughter's demon possessed, Lord, do something, please. She begged, she pleaded, whatever, she said, even the dogs eat crumbs, God. And Jesus, what did he say to her about her faith? Your faith is something, you get what, what does it say, you get what you want? What you want is what you get. What you want is what you get, and he said her faith is what? Something else? Something else. Wow. Imagine, man, your faith is something else, lady. You're a trip. Are you with me? And this wasn't a Jew. This, in other words, this wasn't a Christian. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Sometimes I'm telling you, when you're praying for the sick, when you're out there doing something on the streets, highways and byways, people are going, you're going you're gonna to trip out because you're going to be like, if this was the church, I would have had to taught seven lessons on why you yeah. need faith. Yeah. How to give faith, how to work faith, how to claim faith, how to do all this stuff with the sinners, really? Okay, I'll pray. They believe and they're healed. They believe and they're saved. They believe in God's word. The church were like, well, prove it. You know, it's like, it's a trip. God said, you, you, you trip me out. But what did he say? You get what you want or what? You, you want, what, what did he say? What you want is what you get. So I wonder if sometimes we don't get healed or we don't get blessed or we don't do this. I wonder what we really wanted. We want is what you get. You with me? What do we want? Do we want? I said it, I said it earlier. In praise and worship, if you want something great from God, you got to do something out of the ordinary. Yeah. You've got to break out of your bounds. You've got to break out of your, uh, out of your limitations, out of your, you with me? Yeah. Out of your norm. You with me? And, and, and you you got to go for it. What's the next one? Matthew 17, 20, 17, 20. Um, Matthew 17, 20. If you have faith, I think. Jesus replied, It is because you don't have enough faith. But I can promise you this. If you have faith no larger than a mustard seed, you could tell this mountain to move from here to there, and it would. Everything would be possible for you. Are you guys there? Yeah. What, who is he talking to there? Because he said it, it, uh, it's because of your lack of faith. Who is he talking to? Disciples? Was that when they tried to cast the devil out of the kid? Yeah. And they said, well, we, why couldn't we cast him out? And he said, it's because of the lack of your faith. 
if you had faith. And the other day, my wife bought my daughter in, in England a necklace with the, with the mustard seed. And Naomi seen it, huh? Yeah. And she's like, is that a mustard seed? And I, I told you, they're small. I mean, it's like, it's like a grain of sand. It's so small. And Jesus said, if you have a, a faith that big. Did you? Yeah. They're small, huh? And that, I mean, Jesus, if you got one of those, you move mountains, which is one, one mustard seed. That's how powerful faith is. You know, and we're all there fighting with devils and demons and all this other stuff. Can't cast him out. You know, Pastor Ray, the time he sent his, his men into the room with a little, little lady full of the devil. You know, and he's preaching, and he couldn't saw. He said, you guys take her in the cast of the devil out. Take that little lady in there, Buddy, and all these other guys. I don't know if any of you remember Pastor Buddy. They took her in there, big guys, too. And all you get is, come out, dude. Pastor get preaching, preaching. Pretty soon the door opens. Here she comes, smiling. She walks out of there. They come out all jack ties, twisted. Oh, Pastor, we couldn't do it. Pastor said, women, he said, some of you ladies, get a hold of her and cast that devil out. They went and cast the devil out. These men come out, tore up. Yeah. That little lady tore them up. You with me? Yeah. What was it? You know what I mean? These disciples that Jesus told them was a lack of your faith. But if you have faith that small, he says, you can move mountains with that faith. That's heavy duty. Could you imagine with little faith, if you had great faith? what you can do in your community? Yeah. One person. You with me? What, what's the last one there? Matthew 21, 21. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. Wow. Jesus cursed the fig tree, walked by it, seen some what looked to be fruit. Didn't He grabbed it, opens it, and there's nothing in there. And he said, curse be this fig tree. And he walks away. Next day they come by. And Peter notices, look at the fig tree, Lord, it's dry from the root. I mean, I could imagine that tree dry, dead dry from the very root. And Jesus said, what, did you doubt? He spoke to him. Remember I told you that life and death is in the tongue? And sometimes we're, our situations happen because we're speaking bad over it and not life. You with me? He said, if you, if you have little faith, he said, you can move mountains with that little faith. You can speak to, to circumstances and they'll dry out. That's right. You with me? Yeah. And I mean, we don't go around angry, cursing trees and stuff like that. The <laughs> curse down dry for more. He flipped me off. He flipped me off. You don't do yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. But, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, the fig tree always had a... I know we, we went over in our Bible school, the fig tree represented Israel and different stuff like that. Not that he's going to curse it and it's going to dry or anything like that, but, but uh, he was just showing them. It doesn't, no matter what, what you go through, you could speak to the circumstances. Yeah. Whatever you say is going to happen. Yeah. That's why when you say, nobody likes me, everybody hates me, that's what's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Nobody's going to like you. And everybody's going to hate you. Yeah. Why? Because you said that. Yeah, they never like me. They, you know, I can tell right away. And, and they're, they're mad at me. And this and that. And so when you get there, you know what I mean? You're looking at them all. And they're, they're looking like, what's your trip? <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're the one who started it. They didn't say nothing. I don't know about you. Have you ever worked yourself up like that? Okay. You'd be thinking, man, you know what, man? The last time they acted dumb with me. I can't believe You know, I hope they don't act this. You know, if they do act, this is what I'm going to say. And you start going on and on. And I mean, you build this big old drama in your head. And when you get there, you know what I mean? It's exactly what you said. Because yeah. you, you done spoke it. Yeah, it That's what you believe is going to happen. Yeah. And, and, and they look at you weird. And they don't like you because you spoke that stuff. Yeah, you with me? But if you believe and you say, well, you know what? How can they resist me? 
I'm lovable. They love me, man. And you know what? I'm going to have favor. And God's going to open doors in the city. You with me? God's going to open doors not only with God, but with man as well. You with me? That's why I spoke. And I said, you know what? God's going to speak. God's going to bless our ministry with finances. You with me? When it happens, you're going to say, oh, oh yeah, the pastor said that, huh? Then you'll believe. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. That this place is going to be full. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pastor did say that, huh? Yeah. yeah. You with me? Right. But it takes yeah. faith. Yeah. It takes faith. You ask my wife, sometimes she'll trip out on me. Because I'll speak and I'll say, this is what God's going to do. And, and he does that. And she's like, she looks at me like, wow, this dude's a trip. Because he spoke it and it came to pass. And all it is is faith. I'm not talking about magic. I'm not talking about voodoo. I'm not talking about witchcraft. You know, where people put spells and all this stuff. I'm talking about working your faith. Yeah. You with me? What, what, what does God want? It's all in here. If it's not in here, then you better not be praying it. If it's not in here, you better not be asking for it. Yeah. You can't ask for people, you know, God, I want to have, I want them to obey me. I want to be the boss at work and tell them where to go. You know, and stuff like that. You know, I tell people all the time, you better watch it. You're on the borderline of witchcraft. God is always blessing. God is always speaking positive. God's always, you know what I mean, ble uh, 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 looking for the benefit of other people. Anytime you're not doing that, you know what I mean, you're walking in an area of witchcraft. You can't do that. You with me? He said, bless your enemies. Do good to those who do wrong to you. Amen. You with me? Give to those who are in need. Lend to them. You know, different stuff. Them are the teachings of Christ. And you'd be surprised how many Christians, Shh, I'm not doing that. I don't think so. And yet we claim the name of Christ. Yeah. If we're going to claim that name, I think we ought to live like he lived. Yeah, I think we ought to, and, he, and, and you know what's awesome is that they, they seen Jesus doing miracles and healing and doing all this. And the disciples said, hey, what do we need to do to work the works of God like you're doing? And he told them one word. He said, believe. Yeah. Believe, that's it. Yeah. He didn't say go to Bible college and, 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 and 10 years of this. And, and after you're saved 25 years and all this stuff, you can be a brand new believer. You with me? Keyword believer. Yeah. And he said, you can work the works of God. You with me? I believe that there's things that God will, you know, do in your life and things he requires of us to get to certain levels because that's like giving a kid a 38 special, you know, I mean, a gun. Yeah. You know, he'll go around them, <laughs> shooting people without teaching them the responsibilities of a weapon, yeah. without being the, uh, old enough to understand what this can do. You with me? Yeah. There's certain things you got to do. Certain guidelines you have to live by before you hand a kid a gun. Yeah. And what do they call that? Where they go hunting and what do they call that, Julio? Where they go and they go through a course, hunter safety. Yeah. You got to go through it to get your license so you can go hunting and stuff. And all they're teaching them is responsibilities. It's the same thing as the church. Yeah. We're telling you here, you guys got a loaded weapon, man. You got faith. Yeah. I mean, this thing could you? Bless, or this thing could, you know what I mean? You can use it on the opposite, which is fear. And that's where witchcraft comes in. You know, the brujas, the witches, and all that, they work in fear. If you don't do this, I'll curse you. That's what they tried to tell me in Jamaica. I said, she can't curse me. I'm covered in the blood. It'll come back on you, I told him. And he took off. He didn't know how to handle that. Yeah. You with me? So you got to know who lives inside of you. Yeah. You don't have to fear any devil. Yeah. You with me? But you got you got to understand. We don't walk in fear. It's the opposite of faith. We do not walk in fear. You with me? We don't walk in doubt and unbelief. We walk in faith. And faith is always blessing. Faith is always loving. Faith is always wanting the best for other people as much as you do yourself. You with me? Amen. Anyway, we need faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Stand with me tonight. Amen. How does faith come? Just by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. There, I always tell people there's no greater faith spoken. You can hear pastor all day long. You can buy my CDs. You can do all this. You can hear me and hear me and hear me and hear me. And never walk in faith. 
The greatest faith you're ever going to hear is when you're speaking it out of your mouth. See, when you got up that day and you testified and you spoke to them people, that built you up better than you could have been sitting there thinking, yeah, God has done great things. Because it came out of your mouth and you spoke it and people were blessed. Man. And, then you, and it builds your faith too. That's right. Because it's easier next time when you talk, wait, can I say something? Yep. One of the, remember the pastor I told you how to have that, that whatever he had done that, uh, I don't know what you call it. Yeah, he had this, 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 uh, what do they call them? Like, not chemo, but like stuff like that, treatments. These six treatments or whatever it is they did to him. You know what I mean? He, he said, I was able to go to, he goes to city council meetings and places where like, you know, mayor and all this of Vegas and all this, they're all sitting around and the breakfast, you know, thing for, for businessmen and, and he, he goes to it. And he says, you know what I got to do? He says, I got to sit there and they ask, who are you and what, what are you guys here with? And, well, I'm the mayor and, and, and you know, and they go around they talk and he goes, I didn't even tell him who I was. He said, I just want you to know. He says, four years ago, they diagnosed me with hepatitis. And he said, this is what happened. And he said, and they gave me five years to live. He says, four and a half years, he said, I got this certain treatment and God provided the way for me to get the, the, the money for this. He says, they gave me this treatment. And he says, and today, he goes, and you know what? God healed me. He says, today I sit before you a, a, a cure of an incurable disease. I got the paperwork to show you. And, and he, you know, he went, he just, that's, he goes, that's all I told him. I didn't tell him my name is so-and-so and I'm a pastor of this church. Or he says, I just told him what God had done for me. And he said, and these businessmen, he said, I've been in the meetings before. And they just go on to the next one, go on to the next one. He says, they literally stopped. For about for like 20 seconds, didn't say a word, and they all busted out in applause, praising God for what He had done for this cured the incurable disease. You know I mean? And it makes you walk away thinking, "Wow, God, you're awesome." And it makes you want to tell somebody else. Amen. And you're walking and you're telling people, "Hey, this is what God did for me," and your faith is in increased. Hey, he, he did this for me. Let me pray for you. You with me? Amen. And you're laying hands on them, and you're believing God can really heal them. Amen. That's where that's what's heavy duty. Yes. You're praying for people. You know what I mean? That God, that you want God to save. Amen. I've, I've sat across from murderers, convicted murderers, in jail. They didn't know who I was from anybody telling them, "Hey, God loves you, bro. You don't know me. It doesn't even matter who I am. I'm here to tell you about Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is what He did for me. And he can do the same for you. Tears. Can He save me too? I said, yeah, and if you think one day that, it, that I give my life to the Lord, that one day God can use me like he's using you, I said, I'll take you with me. Yeah. Really? I said, yeah. And God will get you out of jail if you, if you live your life right. Yeah, right. You with me? And right there, man, pray with them over the phone, man, to accept Christ and they're crying and repenting of their sins. Right there. I'm nobody, but I know somebody. Yeah. It says not who it's not who you are, but who you know or whatever. I know him. Yeah, amen. You'll forgive me. Who cares about Pastor Vince Diaz? But Jesus can save you and you'll never be the same. Yeah, amen. And I pray that you know them that encounter with that individual never goes away. And I pray they really truly got saved that day. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. But when you do stuff like that, you walk away more encouraged than the person you prayed for. Yeah. Because you always say, Man, God, you're so awesome. Yeah. And you would use somebody like me to do that? Yeah, amen. And you understand that's where humility comes in. Yeah. And you're like, who sure, am I, God? I'm nobody. That's but right. yet you love me enough that's to right. use me to yeah. touch somebody? Yeah. That's what our whole life's about. That's yeah. where faith yeah. comes in. That's where it begins to work, you know. When you're you're speaking about who God is. Amen. And 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 that's where it increases, that's where it grows. Right there when you're speaking it out. Amen. Try it. Every time I preach to you guys, my faith goes to another level. Amen. I walk away. I can come in here discouraged. I come in, but I preach the word. And once I'm, that's why I told him, Pastor, the, the, the reason God saved the pastors and put them in the ministry so they can keep them from backsliding. So you want to be wanting to be a pastor just to stay out of backsliding. Yeah, yeah, amen. I say, I want to do that, man, because I want to be plugged in. Yeah. You with me? Because when I'm preaching, sometimes, you know what I mean? I'm preaching to myself. 
And I walk away from here thinking, man, I could take this. God, you're, you're awesome. God, man, I can't believe it. People walk away and man, I didn't agree with it. I don't care if you agree. I agree. Amen. <laughs> Let the church say, Amen. <laughs> I'm happy in Jesus, man. Amen. But uh, anyway, man, Nazar, you want to play something? Faith. How many of you tonight can say, God, I, you know what I mean? And, and you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for you. Right. Say, God, I need faith, Lord. Everything that was said tonight, everything you said, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you what, I can stand here tonight and say, I need some faith, God. Yep. I need to work my faith. Because it don't matter how long you've been doing it, it's the just that live by faith. And if I live by oxygen, that means that I need it more to now than I did before. Yeah, amen. You know what I mean? I need it just as much. And, and the faith that we need, you know what I mean? We have to live by, it's like our oxygen. I need faith, God. I need to get to prayer. Yep. I need to get to church. Yeah. I need to get in my Bible and read it for myself. Come to church. Pastor, can I share a testimony? Man, God blessed me in the Word today. Yeah. I was feeling discouraged, but Jesus lifted me up. I was going through trials, and I prayed for my kid, and he was healed. You with me? Financial testimonies is amazing. We need to share those. You know why? So other people will be encouraged. They won't think pastors taking their dollar fifty. They'll think, no, this this giving really works. You with me? Amen. Yeah. Oh Lord, we bless you this evening, Lord. We bless you this evening. In an area of unforgiveness, Jesus teaching on forgiveness. And he told his disciples, you must forgive even 70 times 7. And his disciples said this, the only place ever recorded in Scripture Lord, increase our faith. Father, for those who have harmed us, for those who have hurt us, for those who unknowingly hurt us and those who intentionally hurt us, for those who have caused us harm, we forgive you tonight in Jesus' name. We forgive you in Jesus' name. Father, increase our faith for the hard cases. Increase the case, increase the faith of that one that was abused as a child. Increase the faith of that one that was molested as a child. Increase the faith of that one that has a loved one that has been murdered and taken from them. Increase their faith, God. Increase their faith that they can forgive them. Because forgiveness takes faith. Increase their faith, Lord. Oh, Father, tonight. Father, strengthen us tonight. Yes, Lord. If you've doubted in your heart, you know you have. It's just as simple as saying, God, I doubt. I for forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for doubting you. The father that was speaking about his son, when Jesus told the disciples, he said, you know what, I, it's because of your unbelief that you couldn't cast out this demon. The father, he told him, Lord, he said, I can heal him if you believe. And the father said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. In other words, he was saying, Father, forgive my unbelief. In other words, he was saying, Lord, even the way I've been living my life hasn't been to glorify you. I believe, Lord God, but I've not been walking the life of a believer. I've been walking the life of a backslider. But I come back to you, Lord, tonight in Jesus' name, asking you to forgive me, oh God. Cleanse me, oh God. Wash me, oh God. I believe. How thou my unbelief, Lord. I believe in Jesus tonight. I believe that he is the only begotten Son of the Father tonight. I believe that Jesus can save and heal and deliver. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe that you want to use us tonight for your glory and your honor, God. Do you believe that God wants to use you tonight? 
that God wants to flow through you, to love through you, to heal through you, to speak through you, yes. to bring peace through you. Yes. God uses to bring that peace between gangs, oh God. Uses to bring peace between uh, marriages, Father Lord God, uh, our humanity of God. Use us to bring peace between the sons and the fathers, the mothers and their daughters. Use us. Father, peacemakers, oh God. Oh, Father, help us, Lord, tonight. Increase our faith, oh God.